Uh, Brother Ron's got the offering bucket there. We've already asked the Lord to bless it. So I want to get right into this word tonight. I want to spring off of what we had talked about, uh, what the Lord had, uh, what we learned about the Lord on Sunday about him being the light, his word being the light. We see in John chapter 8, you know, Jesus was speaking to the people and he said, I am the light of the world and if anyone follows me, uh, they will not they will not have to walk in darkness because he says that you will have the light that leads to life. And those of us that are following him, it uh, doesn't matter what our circumstances are. It doesn't matter uh, where we're at. It doesn't matter what life throws at us. As long as we continue to follow him through his word, uh, he will guide us through these dark times and even though our situations are dark our pathway is lit up by his word our pathway gives us his word gives us the pathway to keep going even in the dark uh, we can literally in the dark uh, seasons of our lives through his word we can navigate through this whole darkness as if we had x-ray vision or night vision and that is through his word. And that's really what he was saying here in this uh, uh, chapter 8, verse uh, 12. He said, and those that, those that follow me will not have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. He goes on in chapter 9, verse 5, and he says this, But while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And Jesus is in the world today. Uh, he is sitting at the right hand of the Father, but he is represented today by you and me. The Spirit of the living God lives inside of each one of us. And as we uh, walk in the Word, as we walk in the light of his, his uh, 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 sayings and the things that he spoke to us in the times that we live, uh, it literally... Uh, even though we can't see it, there are those who have no hope can see that even when we're walking through the same darkness that they're walking through, they will recognize that we are walking in a different way than they're walking, even though it's the same darkness, even though it's the same challenges, even though it's the same uh, battles, those that are being led by the light will be walking in the light, in that darkness, and people will recognize it. And uh, the, they go, uh, the scriptures goes on to tell us that those that are in darkness, that, don't, that hate the light, uh, they won't come anywhere near the light because they are afraid that they will be infected by the light and, and their sins will be revealed. It says, but those that are in the darkness, it goes on in uh, chapter 10 to tell us that. It says, but those, uh, those that are in darkness that are looking for the light, what, what one translation says is those that are in darkness that are looking for hope will see the light and will see a great light. So we, we need to realize that even though that... Uh, we go through things in this life. We are still purposed by God with a mission to be the light. And we need to be mindful of that. Why? Why do we need to be mindful of that? Because uh, it will determine a, a lot of the decisions we make. If we are mindful that we are not just going through something by ourselves, but that somebody is watching us, and that if we put our hope in God, now, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Listen, God has never let anybody down. This word has never let anybody down. Now, I have had people tell me, well, you know, Pastor, I just got to tell you the Lord let me down. And I stop them in their tracks and say, listen, no, God has not let you down. Oh, yes, this one lady said, oh, yes, he did. Let me tell you. I said, no, I won't even, I won't even consider letting you tell me this. I said, I know for a fact that he didn't let you down. I said, his word says that he is faithful all the time. I said, now, I don't know what has happened, 
to cause you to think that God has let you down, whether you were believing for something that was not in God's word or his standard, because we do have people doing that. You heard the testimony that I told before about this lady that come up to me and said she'd been praying, and she said, uh, praying for her husband, and she said, uh, uh, Pastor, the Lord uh, uh, showed me who my husband's going to be. And I said, well, that's great. Who was it? Who is it? She said, well, it's that man over there. I said, no, that ain't God. She said, why? I said, because he's married. You're not going to get a prayer like that answered because you're praying against God's standards. And if you're praying like that and you're believing God for that, you are going to be disappointed. You are going to think God let you down. But it's not God let you down. What let you down is your own understanding of the Word of God and His principles. But God has never let anybody down. And it doesn't matter what we're going through. If we apply His Word in our lives, the end of the matter is that we will be blessed he will get the glory for it. And while we're going through it, if we are conscious that we, he is using us as a billboard, as an advertising, uh, 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 we are God's advertising. His spirit that lives in us is going to empower us to get through these things. He's purposed it. He needs it. He needs us to get through these things. So his spirit is not going to let us down. And as we go through these things and as we are submitting ourselves to the, the, the uh, self-control or the spirit control of the spirit, that's meekness, by the way, being controlled by God's spirit is meekness. As we have uh, uh, submitted to that, he will steer us through these battles, through these challenging times, through these times of test and times of trials. And while we're going through it, those who have no hope that are in the same situations that we find ourselves into at the same time, they're going to be looking and they're going to say, tell me, how? How are you able to get through this? And then you'll be able to tell them this through Jesus Christ. That is being a light. When we look at uh, what uh, Jesus' first message was, and I, I uh, spoke a little bit about it last Sunday. His first message uh, uh, coming out of uh, the uh, fourth, uh, fourth chapter of Matthew, he comes into the fifth chapter of Matthew, and starts talking about, by the way, there, there were no chapters back then. It was just one letter that, uh, that Matthew wrote. And, uh, but coming out of that uh, 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 thought that he wrote out of chapter 4 goes into what we now know as chapter 5 is known as the Beatitudes. And through these Beatitudes, what he uh, started off with is to show us the character and uh, the a glimpse of uh, the transformation uh, that is to take place in our lives. And that transformation Affirmation that takes place in our life was for a reason, and the reason is discovered in verse 13, 14, 15, and 16. But I want to go back and I want to look at verse 3. Uh, actually, go ahead and read uh, uh, verse 1 all the way down to 16 for me for a minute. And then I want to, uh, I want to highlight why we're looking at this. And then we, I do want to spend a little time together in corporate prayer for the needs that each one of us have tonight. His disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets, who were before you. Let me interrupt you real quick. 
those verses right there are implying that uh, that there uh, there is a pursuit. He's he's saying for those that will pursue these characters, you know, we're not p talking about poor from a financial standpoint or poor be uh, because of resources. It's talking about those basically that are humble before the Lord who recognize that in their own ability, they have no, uh, they have no way, uh, they have no resources, they have no uh, strength or abilities to, uh, to uh, uh, take care of themselves as God could take care of us. So when we recognize that we are poor in the fact that we cannot forgive ourselves, we cannot cause ourselves, make ourselves uh, uh, not to sin, we, we cannot uh, stop ourselves uh, from being uh, wrongly influenced, and we need his help. So this is a characteristic that God has purposed, and he, what he laid out here is this is what we should be striving for for this type of character. And then this verse uh, 13 through 16 tells us why. Now, he goes on and the Bible goes on through the rest of uh, the New Testament and going into, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the Gospels of uh, John and the Gospels of Peter and, and Paul's uh, epistles. And it adds to this of the things that we are to pursue, these types of uh, uh, the character of God. And it says that we, it, it tells us that we are to pursue basically love. You know, we are to desire uh, spiritual gifts, but we are to pursue the love, which uh, the ultimate uh, character of all of these combined is God, who is love. So he starts this off and says, look, if you keep these things in your focus, he said, then blessed will the poor in spirit be, for you shall inherit the earth, uh, the kingdom of God. He said, blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. We're not just talking about mourning because somebody died, you know. We mourn all the time, you know, when uh, we, we change from season to season and we're, we, we're sad to see a season leave. We mourn that season, we move on, and uh, it says that those that do mourn and allow these seasons to change, allow the Holy Spirit to empower our lives to change from what we were into the new, the new season. Uh, yes, there are, it is uh, a suffering. You know, we do suffer when we uh, let go of the old man, uh, when we let go of the things that, uh, 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 that are destroying our lives a lot of times. It's painful to do this. It's painful to allow the Holy Spirit to deliver you from anger. It's painful to allow the Holy Spirit to deliver you from depression. It's painful uh, to allow uh, the Holy Spirit to help you forgive somebody. I mean, when you look at some of the things that, that we have to struggle with, getting rid of them is painful. And as we get rid of them, we many times mourn because of this, but he said, you shall be comforted. So as we are pursuing these things, the, uh, something is happening in our lives. What's happening in our lives is that we are starting to be illuminated. We are starting to be, like I said, uh, God's purpose is to use us as advertising for his kingdom. He's purpose to elevate us and uh, uh, draw attention to us. It's literally like, well, you know, I'm just going to uh, set Linda on fire because I know as she's on fire and she's burning, a lot of, everybody, you know, everybody runs to a fire, don't they? Everybody sit back and watch something. Wow, look at that burn. You know, something burned down the street? Yeah, let's go look at it. Well, many times the Lord allows us and sets us on fire because he knows it's going to draw people to us. And as we're burning, whether it's going through a trial, whatever it is, God sustains us through this. He sets us on fire, whether it's 
uh, 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 going through a trial or he sets us on fire for the kingdom where we are just, you know, uh, 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 witnessing and we are uh, 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 using our life as a, uh, an example to win souls. And he'll do that and he'll allow that to happen because he wants to get somebody's attention around you. It's like I said before. I had a lady come up to me and she said, uh, uh, well, let me, before I share that, let me finish these three verses there, four verses. Read those four verses there, six, uh, 13 through 16. And if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled, trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Your light is never more brighter than when you are in dark periods of your life, dark seasons. The scripture tells us a lot of times, it'll seem like it's forever, but the scriptures encourage us and says, listen, weeping shall endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. That is a promise to God's people, that it might be dark in your life right now. Things might not be going uh, a, in a good way for you. And you may feel defeated. You may feel afraid. You may feel uh, very, very vulnerable to the point that you may even break down and cry. And the Lord said, that's okay. Because weeping shall endure for a night. There is a time to cry. It says, but don't get caught up and lost in the hopelessness of the dark because you're not purposed to be in the dark. You are people that are of the light. And it says that joy is coming in the morning, meaning that there is a reason that you're going through what you're going through and that he has purposed it and that when he is finished perfecting this reason that you will receive the benefit from it of joy. It says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And he says, Jesus said in the 17th chapter of John, as he's praying to his father right before they come and arrest him and carry him off for uh, the uh, cru to, to, uh, uh, to crucify him and persecute him. And he says, Father, he says, I pray for my disciples. He said, I pray that my joy, that the joy that is in me may remain in them. And he's praying this knowing he's getting ready to go to the cross. He's praying and knowing that he's getting ready to be persecuted. And he's getting ready to go through all of this, this horrendous uh, 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 pain and suffering. And he says, I pray for them that your joy, which is my joy, may remain in them. As they go through this, another way that he, uh, you could look at it, that he said it, it's like he said to Peter. He said to Peter in the 22nd chapter of Luke, he said, Peter, he said, um, he said, Satan is desiring to have you that he may sift you as wheat. He said, but remember that I've prayed for you. You know, because Peter basically said, listen, he said, no, you know, you're not going to, you know, Jesus said, look, now I must go and I must uh, be handed over to the high priest and uh, they must take me and they must, uh, 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 you know, um, uh, I must suffer is what he said. And then they will put me to death. And Peter grabbed Jesus by the arm, put his arm around him, pulled him off to the side and said, uh, come here for a minute. You know, uh, I, we really like that part that you were talking about. You know, the kingdom is now uh, at hand and, you know, uh, the glory of God is going to be revealed. He said, but all this stuff about you dying, that, you don't need to be, you know, that, uh, uh, that ain't going to happen. We ain't going to let that happen. Jesus said, Satan, I rebuke you. Jesus knew that that was his purpose. 
Peter was thinking in the flesh, like, listen, we got an army that we built up now, and Rome come in here and try to take you. We're, they're not going to take you because we're going to defend you. But Jesus knew what his purpose was. Jesus told Peter, he said, look, Peter, he said, you're going to be tried through this. And he literally told them, he said, many of you, you in this hour, this next hour, before this hour is up, you are going to be tried because of me. You're going to be tested because of me. Because he knew that he was not going to fight. He was going to surrender his life and give his life as a sacrifice. And they're thinking that they're going to stand and fight. And Jesus said, you're going to stumble because of this. You're going to really have a problem because of this. He said, but remember what I have told you. Jesus told us that these things so that after he's gone and we see them happen, then we will have the comfort in knowing that it is God's plan. And if it's God's plan, then this is a controlled fire. This is a controlled trial. This is a controlled test that we're going through, meaning that it will not kill me. It's what we said before, what don't kill you will make you stronger. Well, God has purposed everything we go through to make us stronger, not to kill us. The devil has purposed to kill us. I said it many times before. Uh, it was some time in my walk with the Lord, uh, a few years into it, I finally realized that God and the devil are both trying to kill me but for different reasons. The devil wants to kill me to completely destroy me and annihilate me because he hates God and he wants to destroy me. The Lord wants to kill me, to kill my flesh, so that as the flesh yields to the Spirit, that I may live to the Spirit and fully understand what real, true life is. So when we see here that these pursuits here in the Beatitudes says those that are pursuing these things are blessed. If we are pursuing these things, we're going to be blessed. Our individual lives will be blessed. We will be the beneficiaries of it. Uh, we shall uh, 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 have the promises of, of our health. We should have the promises of uh, what we need to sustain ourselves, sustain our families. The scripture says, work with your hands uh, 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 with that which is good, that you may have some to give to others. The emphasis is that your needs and your family's needs are already met. And he said, these are those uh, benefits of pursuing these characters. And if you do, here is the ultimate end result of the purpose of doing this. It is so that, uh, that your salt will remain potent. You ever take a bite of uh, meat or a, uh, a uh, we had bought some barbecue potato chips not too long ago. Uh, I, that was one of my weaknesses. I, I did dabble back in it a little bit. And, but my favorite kind is Snyder's. And I took those potato chips and I started eating them. And I am telling you, they were so salty. Now, I, I'm a salty guy. You know, some people, when they, when they get more, they want a snack, they'll run to sweets. Well, when I get where I want a snack, I'll, I run to something salty. I like a salty uh, snack before I go to bed. But these potato chips were so salty, I couldn't even eat them. And she said, wow. She said, if you can't eat them, then they must be really salty. And she tried them and she couldn't eat them. But the point is that they did not lose their impact. They did not lose their uh, uh, flavor. They did not lose their potency. There's nothing more disappointing than sitting down for me and uh, uh, grabbing a handful of uh, peanuts or, or cashews, not looking at it, and throw it in my mouth, and they're non-salted. They're just bland, like, mm, I, well, I'll eat them. I mean, I like them, but, man, there ain't nothing like eating, you know, fresh salted peanuts and salted uh, uh, cashews. 
And this is what he's saying here. This is why, you know, somebody said, well, why anytime anybody go in a bar, they have all these peanuts, uh, salted peanuts and stuff, and these salted pretzels sitting there. I said, because they want you to eat them, because once you eat them, you get thirsty. And that's what they're selling. They're selling drinks. Spiritually speaking, he wants us to stay salty. Why? So that when we come in contact, now listen, He's already told us that personally we're going to benefit from this. Personally, we're going to benefit if we yield to the guidance of the Holy Spirit and allow ourselves to be tested, allow ourselves to be tried, allow ourselves to go through these things so that he can use us as a billboard. It's okay, like I said, it's, nobody goes through things looking pretty. You might as well stop it. Nobody's going to fall, you know, looking like they got finesse, you know. I mean, usually when you, you ever do that, you ever walk, I, I remember walking out of stores, you know, and, and I trip and fall, and I, immediately I jump up as fast as I can, look around like, who saw that? You know, who saw that? You know, and then you just keep walking. Oh, nobody saw it. Woo, I'm good. If somebody saw it, then you're like, oh, man, I can't believe that, you know. But, you know, the reality is stop worrying about it. God don't care about what you look like when he is working on us and we are carrying a load that causes us to start stumbling as if we're going uh, to collapse. Because those are the signs that uh, we are at our point of breaking and we know that right before uh, uh, the dawn comes, it's the darkest. And right before we receive the strength, we are the weakest. But the Lord says, in all of this process, the ultimate plus to him perfecting this in us is that we are his light. He is the light. He says, as long as I am in this world, I am light. And that means there is no situation that is hopeless that God cannot intervene in. Now, he will intervene in situations in our lives in a way many times that we have not calculated. Sometimes we don't want him to intervene in this way. We want it worked out like we have already perceived in our minds that it would be worked out. But you see, he already sees the end of the matter. He already sees the purpose of what he's doing. And when he does one thing, he does one thing for multi-reasons. We are contemplating him doing one thing for us for one reason. Because this is the outcome that we need. There's some times that, that that fits in with God's plan. But there are other times it doesn't fit in with God's plan. And he says, it will be all right. We will do it my way. And in the end, you'll understand, and you will be blessed, and I will receive the glory for it. So he said right there, the purpose is so that you can be potent to people that we meet, spiritually speaking. It's that if you read it backwards, reading from verse 16 down through uh, 13, we see that as we are a light, it draws people to us, just like it said in chapter 9 of John. It said those that are in the dark that are looking for light or looking for hope will be drawn to somebody's light. Be drawn in when they see somebody. They may see, uh, be, be struggling with something in life. And I've used this example before when Peg and I were going through, you know, the cancer that she had years ago. And the time, at the same time, my mother, biological mother, was dying of lung cancer. And we went through this, trusting the Lord. All of those that saw us go through it where we were working. Many times the uh, devil in the corridor, the damned and the doom, will sit back and telling all of those that we have witnessed to, watch this one. Jared ain't going to get up after this. Watch it. He's not going to be able to get through this. He's going to panic. He's going to just lose it all. Sonny is not going to, she's not going to make it. 
He's ringing the bell of doom and gloom to everybody that you know and everybody that knows you, and they're going to watch you go through this. But if you keep your eyes focused up on the light and the word that guides us, it says, you will be guided, and through this light, my light, you shall have life. That situation will be brought back to life somehow. And after we went through all of this, my mother ended up dying. And, but Peg, after uh, uh, two or three surgeries, you know, she uh, has fully recovered. And the one guy came to me, and he said, uh, tell me something, Jerry. He said, when you and your wife were going through all of this turmoil and with your wife having cancer, because like I said, they said, if this is what we think this is, we, if, we, if this cancer is what the cancer we think it is, he, they looked at her and said, you're going to have an uphill battle, meaning this ain't going to be easy. And uh, uh, they saw us go through this. Yes, they saw our tears. Yes, they saw at times our fears. Yes, they saw at times our weaknesses and our weariness, but they also saw that we never gave up. It's like it said that, yes, Abraham did stagger at the task that he had to do, but he never staggered at the promise. When he was told, take your son up there and uh, sacrifice him, he staggered in, in having to do this, but he never staggered at at the promise. We never staggered at knowing that what we've got to do is stay focused and be led by his word and draw our hope from his word. And he, he said, tell me how you were able to get through this. And I said, well, why? He said, because we're going through it. We're going through it right now. His wife was diagnosed with cancer. His daughter uh, was missing uh, kidnapped and none of us knew this and he said I just need to know who I can look at and when I remembered you going you guys going through this horrendous time in your life how did you get through it and I said the only way I could get through it was in the hope of God's Word you see even though it was dark in our time in that season of our life and even though at times we were weary and we were hurting and we were crying and at times and, and not knowing how it was going to turn out. You see, we're looking back now on history and we know how it turned out. But while we were going through it, we did not know how this was going to turn out. I did not know if she was going to live or if mom was going to live or die. I know now because I'm through it. Mom did pass away. She did go on to be with the Lord. But the Lord did sustain her life. But while we're going through it, that trauma in our lives was real. And people saw it. And it didn't matter how much you put on Christ. Because we are told to put on Christ. That means that even when you don't feel like being a light or an a, a inspiration or an encouragement to somebody else, the scripture says... If you will just try, if you would just be willing to try, my spirit will empower you to do it. And that's all we did. And many times we did it because, not because we wanted to be a light, but because we understood and had faith that if we do it, we'll get through it. And we don't know what it'll look like, but when we get through it, our lives will be blessed and he'll get the glory. This is what it means about the light has come into the world. And that Jesus said that as long as I'm in this world, the light is in this world. And you and I now carry the light of Christ. And the world will no longer live in that darkness that they were in 400 years when the glory of God had departed. That had to be the worst time in human history when the glory of God had departed from the earth to the point that man could not feel that no more. 
well, it'll never get that dark again. Because it doesn't matter how deep we go in, in the trials, no matter how deep we go into the testing times, no matter how deep we go in the battles and the struggles that we have in this life, his light will always be there. The light of hope in our lives will always be there. And it will produce life. Our relationships will live again. Our finances will live again. Our health will live again. That's our hope. So in this season when we're, uh, uh, we are contemplating on why Christ came, re realize he came so that the light, the people that were walking in darkness would no longer have to walk in darkness but be, see a bright light. And those who it said walked in the shadow of death will no longer have to walk in the shadows but walk in the light. So we're going to transition over into our prayers. The church and the body of Christ needs to start in unity, praying and interceding again. And I want to use this time that we have left tonight to bring together in unity those of us that are here. And I've said it before, I, I like using the altar, and I want to invite you to come and use the altar. If you, like me, are struggling on getting down on your knees, uh, years ago I could do it with ease. I can't do it now. You know, just come down, sit on the front row, but bring your petitions before the Lord tonight in a corporate effort because the Scripture says the Spirit of God will move from bosom to bosom. And there is a impartation and a visitation that is experienced when the body of Christ come together in intercession than when we are praying by ourselves. There is an experience that we don't get that's not available in an individual private visitation. Not that uh, private visitations aren't uh, uh, needed and aren't uh, uh, good because they are. I love the private visitations. But there is an enhanced spirit of hope and faith when we as the body of Christ come together in unity, in intercession, and in prayer. Because immediately our prayers are united together in faith. And the, the scripture says that God dispatches his angels to set up the environment to fulfill our prayers and requests. So let's move into intercession. I'm going to start it, and then I'll probably let Miss Peg, since she's not been here for a while, we let her uh, say a prayer. But come, come you.